Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to cover Sonar, installation and setup. Sonar is a TV collection manager for BitTorrent and Usenet clients. Basically, it automates the downloading of your TV shows. Sounds good, right? Well, stick around because I'm going to show you how to set it up and how to configure it for your TV show collection. All right, let's get into it. To get started, log into your Unraid server, click on apps in the search box, type Sonar, R, like the pirate. All right, so we're going to click on Binhex Sonar and click Install. And like always, the first thing we want to check here is the port number. Make sure it's available before we continue. And Sonar likes to use port 8989 and 9897. So let's scroll down to the bottom. Click on Show Docker Allocations and make sure those are not used. And those are all available. So we'll go back to the top. Host path two is the location for your downloads. So go ahead and click onto that and mine are under MNT user and then downloads. I'll click back there to get select that. And under host path three, this is the location for the actual TV shows themselves. So that will be for me under media. And then you can either select TV shows or just leave it in the root media folder, which is what I'm going to do. Scroll down to the bottom, hit apply. Now for the boring disclaimer stuff. Please don't download media that you don't own. If you enjoy the media, then please purchase it and support the creators. Use common sense and use this guide at your own risk. All media used in this guide was either dummy data or obtained as public domain and therefore not protected by intellectual property laws such as copyright, trademark, or patent laws. All right, that is all set, so click done. Click over to the Docker tab. And there you'll find Binhex Sonar listed over to the right. Go ahead and turn on the auto start so that it'll start up next time the system starts. Click on the Binhex Sonar icon and click Web UI. First thing that's going to pop up is that it requires authentication. The authentication method that I like is the basic browser pop up. So I'll select that. Authentication is required. Username, I'm just going to call this demo. And I'll pick another, let's see, super secret password, and then confirm the password, and then click Save. And at its main page here, it says that there's no series found, there's no TV shows listed. We'll get to that. If you've seen my radar video, it's very similar to that, but we'll do a quick run through of what the options are. Under Series, this is where your TV shows will either get added, or you can import libraries, or otherwise look at your media. We'll come back to that in a moment. And the calendar will show you all the past and upcoming episodes that you have monitored in your system. Activity will show you the queued files that you have, the history of files that have been processed through the queue, and the block list is for files that have failed and then you've marked as blocked. Under Wanted, it will show you the TV shows that you have marked for monitoring that are either missing or that the cutoff is unmet. Next, we have Settings. This is where we'll set up Sonar to handle the TV shows and process them for you. Under Media Management, in my previous Plex video, we talked about Sonar and Radar having the ability to rename the TV shows and the movies, and this is where that's done. So for rename episodes, go ahead and select that option. Replace illegal characters, you want to leave that checked. It allows you to replace illegal characters that are not allowed on your operating system. Under colon replacement, there are several different options to replace colons. The default is dash space dash, which is fine, but you can then just delete it. You can have it replaced with just a dash or a space and a dash or whatever suits your needs there. I'm going to leave it on Smart Replace. The standard episode format. This is how the episode files will be renamed depending on the format that you have selected. In this case, the series title, the season, the episode, the episode title, and the quality are all listed. Down below, it shows you what that will actually look like. So for a single episode, it'll have the series title, S01, which is short for Season 1, E01, which is short for Episode 1, the episode title, and then the quality information follows. I'm not concerned with the quality information, so I'm going to remove that. And as you can tell, it updates down below to show you what the file naming will look like. There's lots of other options available. If you click on the question mark to the right, it'll show you all the different options that are available. The item on the left side of these columns are the token that's used, and the right side shows you what it'll look like. To add these, let's say you'd like the IMDB ID number. You just click on that, and it adds it down to the selection part at the bottom. And if you hit close, now when you come back here, it'll show you the format that you have selected and the resulting change here. Once again, I don't need the IMDB ID, so I'll remove that. I'm happy with the way that looks. I'll move on. 
The daily episode format is for shows that come out daily. And for that, once again, I don't want the quality information. I will remove that, but the rest looks fine to me. Anime episode format, once again, same information applies. Remove that. The season folder format. Here you can specify how you want each season folder to be displayed. If you click on the question mark to the side, it shows you all the different options. The default is fine with me, so I'm just going to close this and leave that alone. Under file management, you've got unmonitored deleted episodes. If you delete a show from within Sonar, it's beneficial to have it stop monitoring because it will download all that information again. When you're done with your selections, hit Save Changes. Under Profiles, these are the different profiles that are available within Sonar. They all relate to the media quality of each download. So for the any category, basically saying that any TV show quality that it's found, it will grab. Each one of these categories are completely customizable. And to modify one, you simply click on it. The different qualities will be listed off to the right. If you'd like to add one, you simply click on it. To remove one, you just click on it again. I find that the default formats are fine, so I'm just going to leave that alone. If you want to create your own special format, you can click on the plus icon. We'll name this one, let's say, Blu-ray. And I will go through and select all the Blu-ray formats, like so, and then save. Now you've got your own custom quality profile. We'll talk about these profiles in a moment. Under the quality, each item within the profiles are customizable to suit your needs. By that I mean each item is customizable in the size requirements that is required to meet that criteria. So for a Blu-ray 480p, its minimum size has to be 128 megabytes per hour of data. If it does not meet that, then Sonar will ignore it and skip over that option. You can also set the maximum size, and then you simply click and drag these numbers here, the blue one is for minimum, the green is the preferred size, and then the maximum is the yellowish orange color. And once again, that is the amount of data per hour. So for the minimum here, 120 megabytes per hour, you'll see that reflected here. So a half hour show would be 60 megabytes in size, minimum. The maximum size would be, for a half hour show, 4.4 gigabytes. These are totally customizable and you can change them to however you see fit. I think the defaults are fine, so I'm just going to reset this and move on. Moving on to indexers. Indexers are the different sites that interact with Sonar to fetch and manage the media, to find the media that you're looking for. To add an indexer, simply click on the plus, find the one that you would like. In this case, let's say you have an account with IP Torrents. You click on that, you fill out the information, and once it's filled out with the proper information, you test it. And this gear icon will come back with a green check mark. Then you simply hit save, and that index will be added to the list. In another video, we'll set up Prowler, and that'll be the system that we use for all the indexers. Moving on to download clients. In a past video, I've used Deluge VPN as the download client. So I'll be adding that now. Click on the plus. Under torrents, you'll find Deluge. The name is fine. You definitely want it enabled. Under host, I'm going to change this to my server address, which is 10.0.0.0. 11 and the port number is 8112 and if you don't know the information for your setup if you go back to your unraid server and you find your bin hex deluge click on the name and under host port one you'll find the port number that you used for your system which in my case is the default port under password this is the password that you used when you set up deluge so enter that information into there within deluge we'd set up labels and for the category here this information will be displayed within that label within Deluge. The recent priority and the older priority is just the priority to use when grabbing episodes that aired within the last 14 days or that are over 14 days old. You can either do first or last. Last is default and that is fine for my setup. You have the option to add it paused, which you can certainly do, but I don't need to do that. And the last option, remove completed, will tell Sonar and Deluge what to do with the file once it's been fully processed by the system. In this case, once it's been fully processed, it's going to remove it from the download client, which is what we want. When you're all set, click test, and that should come back with a green check mark, which it has. If not, go back, check your server address, your port number, and your password. Those are typically the failure points. Once done, click save. Now you see that Deluge has been added to the download client list. If you have other download clients, you can add those by clicking on the plus and going through the same process. Import lists. Import lists are a way for you to import lists from other services to automatically be handled by Sonar. To add one, you click on the plus, you click on whichever list you'd like, 
There's a few different options to choose from. If you have a tracked account, you can select that, adjust the settings to however fits your needs, username, authenticate, test again, it'll come back with a green check mark, and then hit save. I don't care to import any lists, so I'm just going to cancel out of that. Next option is connect. And under connections, this allows Sonar to communicate with your different media servers so they can update it as files have been processed throughout Sonar. So to add one, you click on plus. I use Plex, so I will select that. The notification triggers are what's going to trigger a notification within Plex. In this case, on an import, on an upgrade, on a renaming of a file, series delete, episode file delete, so on and so forth. You can select whatever options you want to select whatever you don't want. Under the host, you put in the host IP of your Plex server. In this case, for me, it is 10.0.0.11. Put in the port number. The default for Plex is 32400. If yours is different, go ahead and change that. And then under Authenticate with Plex TV, click on that. It's going to look at the email account. You hit Sign In. It's going to prompt you to log into Sonar with that information that we had set up earlier. In my case, it was demo and then my super secret password. Once it's authenticated, it'll have a check mark, then hit save. And now you'll see that the Plex media server is added as a connection. Under metadata, you can set up metadata collections for the different media servers that you have within your system. The two big ones are probably going to be Kodi and Plex for most people. To set one up, click on the one you want, in this case Plex, hit the check mark for enable, click save. Metadata sources. The option there is the TVDB, which is totally fine for our needs. So I'll just continue on. And under general, in the beginning when you first signed in, Sonar had you create some security in the forms of a username and a password. This is where that information is set. If for some reason you need to change your username or your password, you simply change those in these locations here. And then don't forget to save it. Under UI or user interface, this is for setting up Sonar for the look and feel that you like for your systems. For the calendar, you can set it to be on a Sunday-based or a Monday-based week. It doesn't really matter for me, because I don't really use that feature. The date format and the time format are probably the ones that most people would be interested in changing. At the very bottom, the UI language. If English is not your native language, you can select whichever one you'd like. Once done, make sure you hit Save Changes, and Sonar should be all set up. The only thing is, there's no media in there, so I'll have to add some. So if we go up to Series, we've got the option to add a new show or import a library. If you've already got a bunch of TV shows, then let's import that library first. To do that, click on Import Existing Series, click Start Import, and Sonar would like to know where that information is stored at. When we set it up, we told Sonar that the media would be under Media Folder. That would be a TV show. So we'll click Add. Sonar now processes and looks for the TV shows that we have within our library and tries to match them up. In this case, it looks like it's matched everything fine. In the Monitor option, tell Sonar what you want it to monitor on each individual TV show. You can have it monitor all episodes, future episodes only, only the missing episodes, existing ones, and so on and so forth. And since this is all dummy information, I have no reason for Sonar to monitor any of these TV shows. So I'm gonna select none. Most times though, you would leave it on all episodes. The quality profile. This is where you tell Sonar what kind of quality you want it to focus on downloading for that individual TV show or episode. And when you select that, it shows you the different options that are available. This Blu-ray option here is the one that we created earlier. Let's say for Criminal Minds, you wanted it to get high def 1080p quality files. So you select that. Smallville, yeah, it's an okay show. Let's just say 720 is fine. And Beverly Hillbillies, well, since that's a fairly old show, I doubt it's gonna be available in anything HD. So we'll just leave it on any quality. These are all standard television shows, which we have selected here under the series type. If it's a day-to-day -day show, such as like a news channel or something of that nature, then you can update it to be daily or an anime. And lastly, under series, Sonar will match up what it believes is the correct series for the television shows that you have in your existing library. If it is not correct, you can click on it and select the right show. You can change the information within here and it will refresh and find different options available. It is Criminal Minds, 2005, so we'll select that. These are all correct. And once you went through your library and matched everything to the settings that you would like, simply click Import at the bottom. Now, if you go back to Series, you'll see that the shows have been imported successfully. To add a new show, click on Add New, and in the search box, you type in the name of the show you're looking for. In this case, Sonar is suggesting that we type in Breaking Bad, which is a good enough option for me to look for. Give it a moment, it'll process and find it. Once you found the show that you'd like, simply click on it 
and then you can choose the root folder that's going to go into in this case the tv folder because that's the only one that we have imported so far what you want it to monitor all episodes missing episodes all that same information the quality profile you'd like and once your selections are done click add and i'm going to go none because i do not want it to download anything go back to series and you'll see that it is listed there so if we click into breaking bad you'll see that it lists all the seasons and how many episodes you have of each season currently we have none of these which is to be expected since we just added it if we go back to series so if we go over to the beverly hillbillies we scroll down you'll see that under season one it shows that there are actual episodes in there if we go into a show it'll show you the cover art the banner background for it and some basic information about the television show itself the first thing you'll see here is this little bookmark icon that is the monitoring status right now since it's not solid that is marking it as not monitored click on that it'll change it to monitored which means it'll look for new episodes hit it again and it marks it as unmonitored it'll show you the television show name how long the episodes are what category it's in and the years that it ran if it's a still running show it'll say dash present below you have some information about the show on your server in this case the location of it the size that you have the quality profile whether it's monitored or unmonitored it shows you if it's ongoing or if it's ended and the network that it's from below you have a brief description of the television show itself as you can see this show is not being monitored you can monitor individual seasons though to do that you have to have this option enabled and then you can select which seasons you would like you turn that off then it disables it for all of them under series monitoring you can change them all at once but i do not want that on so i'll turn this off not sure why i'm doing it that way and if you go into a season it'll show you each individual episode shows you the episode number, the title, the date it was released, and then you can manually select whether it's monitored or unmonitored here. All the way to the right, you've got the option to do an automatic search for that episode or a manual search. By clicking on the episode name, it shows you information about that episode. These are some of the episodes that I got as their public domain. If you click on that, it'll show you more information about the actual media file, where it's located, its size, what language it's in, and the quality of that file. One last thing to show you here. If you click refresh and scan up here, Sonar will go through and scan all the media files that you have. If you click on Preview Rename, Sonar will actually look at all the media files and show you all the files that are named incorrectly. It will give you the option to quickly rename everything with a click of a button. Look through the list. If everything is matching up and looks good, simply click Organize at the bottom. If we do another refresh and scan and then go back into the Rename Preview, it'll show you that everything is all done and it's all renamed properly. Much easier than doing it all by hand. And there you go. Sonar is all set up and ready to go. So what do you think of Sonar? Were you able to get all your media imported? Let me know in the comments below. But before you go, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.